So the other day, something kind of interesting happened on 4chan. Oh shit, wait, never mind. Rules 1 and 2, of course. I'm forgetting about my internet secret clubhouse. Uh, I mean Reddit. Uh, um, I mean 9gag or something. Whatever, let's just be real. On 4chan in 2018, on April Fool's Day, there was an event that occurred across the different boards that randomly assigned an Easter-themed team name to all users of the website. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with 4chan, and really it's current year, what are you doing? But if you're not familiar with the website, and actually, never mind, it's good for you, I'm sure. Oh, you're probably better off. 4chan is an entirely anonymous website. I'm Michael. I am not at liberty to reveal my identity. Far out. There are a couple of boards that have some small manners of self-identification, such as, for example, on the Politically Incorrect board and on the Sports board, there are flags. This is also on several others, like um, the International board, boards in which it would make sense to have a flag. Your flag is representative of your physiological location. So, of course, my flag would be the United States, and if you live in Germany, it will be Germany, and so on and so forth. Of course, this allows us to easily identify the best shit posters, who are always Australians, and also those most in need of a good purge, which are always Canadians. Also, on a few number of boards, poll also included in this, there are thread-based identifiers, or IDs, that allow you to be clearly noted as the same person within one single thread, so that it's obvious if you're shitposting, or shilling, or spamming. However, this is not the case on many other boards. But what was the case across all the boards on the 1st of April of 2018 is that everyone was suddenly given an identification, a team, a social group with which to affiliate oneself. Above your post, it said what member of what team you were. These teams were, well, considering that it was the 1st of April, Easter-themed. The various teams were cream, mini, peanut butter, chocolate, or peat. And it was a random scrambling that determined what group you would end up belonging in. That means that you had no ability to determine what group you were in. Couldn't pick cream, or mini, or peanut butter, or chocolate, or peep. You were just assigned a group. Now, as someone who absolutely loves social identity theory and finds it fascinating and one of the major focuses of my research, I was absolutely intrigued by this event. Because it meant what would happen is that we were going to start to see social groups develop in real time in accordance with the social identity model of de-individuation effects. And for the seven on that, see Lear and Spears, 1991, and for more reviews, see Riker, Spears, and Postmas, 1995. Both will be linked below, as always. I've talked about the social identity model before in my videos on 4chan and anonymity. Of course, anonymity is a multifaceted sort of thing that can make us assholes, but can also in many ways make us more free. It can allow us to speak our true minds and develop our opinions in a unique environment in which we do not have to face the repercussions of the social context. The interesting thing about the social identity model of de-individuation effects posits that in an anonymous environment or a de-individuated environment, wherein we don't have identifying factors or we have minimal identifying factors, we will go towards any indication of the group in order to understand better our sense of the self. This also means that this simulated group, self, this idea that's been developed in a de-individuated or anonymous environment actually supplants or replaces the individualized sense of the self. Who am I is not who am I as an individual, but who am I in context and relation to the group norms, and to what group norms are those? Well, they're group norms that in the anonymous or de-individuated environment are kind of being created on the fly, as we saw over this past week on 4chan. And again, I know that, oh, we don't talk about 4chan, but this is a fascinating social science experiment, so I do want to give it just a little tiny bit of attention, and this will be a very short video for me. Yeah, I do mean it this time. But in short, the basic premise behind Side is as follows. When we're anonymous, when we lack any individuating factors that make me, me, things that really identify me as an individual, instead we look to the group in order to better understand the self in any given social context. You are individuals. You are small, and you think in small terms. And on 4chan, well, we lack almost all individuating factors, even on a board like Poll, where we might have, you know, thread IDs, where we might have flags. 
Outside of that, though, there are very few identifying factors. As such, we can look at something that is a unifier, something like a team name that appears above your post and says, I am Team Cream or I am Team Peep, and use these as a sort of shorthand to understand group identification. Now, of course, these are more or less jokes. This was an April Fool's joke in general from Hiroshimut. No one really was taking the shit at least too seriously. I mean, maybe some people were, because that is a potential consequence of deindividuation effects, is that things can get a little bit too serious a little bit too quickly. In fact, well, one of the side effects of deindividuation is toxic disinhibition, which is in the allowing of the self to go completely unhinged and behave in antinormative behavior because we lack any social cues and because we know there are no repercussions for our actions. As such, yeah, maybe some people did take these groups a little bit too seriously, but for the most part, it was all in good fun. However, as a social scientist, oh god, academics, please respond, I hate calling myself that anymore, as a social scientist on YouTube, it was fucking fascinating to me to watch how these groups evolved unique and independent and individual sets of group norms. What is so fascinating about this is that nothing was given to anyone outside of a name, and yet we found that there were distinct and unique individual groups that formed. That means that people who were Team Cream had different sort of cultural norms that they developed in their short time span of having these names attributed to their sense of self at all, attributed to their posting on an anonymous image board. And yet, Team Cream was definitively distinctive from Team Peanut Butter, which was definitively distinctive from Team Mini, and so on and so forth. This is the kind of fascinating thing about social groups, and it's been studied extensively. While I've talked a little bit about side and how the side model predicts that people will latch onto these groups when they lack any other identifying factors, and how these groups will come to collaboratively construct group norms over time, and particularly, as we've seen here, collaboratively construct group norms over a very short period of time. Moreover, that in line with not only typical deindividuation effects of toxic disinhibition, but more importantly, of in-group out-group effects, as according to social identity theory, see Tajfell and Turner's research, as I have covered extensively and will continue to always cover. That particularly in the online environment, not only does the existence or persistence or even any sort of notifier of the existence of a group increase these feelings of group membership, but also negative feelings that regard the out group. Yeah, we've talked about that and you can certainly see it. Look at all of these sort of faux fights that happened between people on 4chan over I'm Team Cream, no I'm Team Peanut Butter, go fuck yourself you dickbag. Well, that's just fascinating. You know, uh, I've talked about this before, that there's this sort of perception that the way that social identity works is that it's in-group love and out-group hate. But the research actually doesn't indicate that, at least not at large. But when you have these very anonymous kinds of groups, what are called actually minimal groups, in particular in this case, minimal groups under the context of social identity model of deindividuation effects. Well, all you need is a simple signifier, a simple indicator in order to prefer one over the other. Not only to prefer one over the other, but to come again and form instantaneous norms that will then, the next day, completely disappear. But what is a minimal group? Well, Henri Tajfel, in a lot of his research that he conducted on social identity theory during the 70s and 80s, basically wanted to see just how basic he could get down into the nitty gritty, into the most tiniest basic detail of what constituted a group, and examine whether or not it would cause people to affiliate or disassociate from one another. And do you want to know what, guys? Um, he found it. Consistently. In fact, the level for minimal groups to exist can be as simple as the color of your shirt. Meaning if I give one group of people a red shirt and another group of people a blue shirt, they will differentiate themselves as disparate groups and will begin the process of group norm collaborative construction. That's how kind of fucked up we are and tribalistic we are as a species. All I need to do is say, hey you, you're team blue. Hey you, you're team red. And all of a sudden, you as team red will like other members of team red more. And you as team blue will like other members of team blue more. It doesn't matter if you previously had no prior exposure to a person that's within your group or if you have absolutely nothing in common. When the group identity is most salient, when the thing that is most active in our present waking minds, the thing that we are 
processing actively and cogently, cognitively, is our in-group identity. Well, then that's the thing that we think about most. When I describe myself, when I think about people I want to interact with and how I would interact with them, and when I think about people I don't want to interact with because I find them distasteful. Because they're not like me. They're not homogenous. These become the most active and salient points within our cognition. How astounding is it then to think about this, really, that your entire perception of the self under some context can really rely on what is essentially the flip of a coin. Whether you're part of Team Cream or Team Peep was based on a numerical algorithm. There was nothing other than random chance, and as in many of the studies that have been attributed to minimal group examination and minimal group membership, ostracization, and in-group favoritism, all of this kind of shows that arbitrary groups are still groups. And some really fascinating shit, at least, came out of the short-term micro-experiment that happened on 4chan on the 1st of April in 2018. One of the things that's so interesting about minimal group identification or minimal membership is that it kind of reflects quite horrifyingly more intense or more meaningful group membership. And in fact, may actually possess some more extreme effects than we would find in typical groups. Because in these minimal groups that are formed in a short period of time or are formed off of arbitrary or absolutely nonsense reasons, we lack some things that we would normally find in social groups. For example, normal social groups often tend to have hierarchies. People who have been members for longer, people who are elders, people who are respected, people who have gained some sort of notoriety or status within the group norm. However, when we establish new group norms, and this is of particular import when we talk about a completely anonymous environ such as 4chan, or an environ that is a very highly pseudonymous, such as 4chan's poll, or int or any other board that uses flags where there are some minor indicators of who one may be. It is uh, uniquely different because there are no hierarchies. And because there are no hierarchies, everyone is equal in the fray. That means everyone has everything to gain and everything to lose from their participation in the group. And moreover, what we find is more desire to lose than to gain. For example, in the Vladimir's Choice experiment, Sedanis, Haley, Molino, and Prado found, 2007, that people were more willing to risk long-term sort of destruction, or at least having lower resources for their group, in favor of short-term gain, just kind of to spite the out-group. Just to say, fuck you, when we're talking about minimal groups. By this I mean, in this particular experiment, the participants were more willing to make sure that they just got one up on the outgroup than got a better deal in general. In other words, people are willing to sacrifice their long-term good when it comes to these minimal groups in particular, these assigned groups, these groups that mean fucking nothing with no hierarchy within them, in order to just get one over on the outgroup. And in that way, often, kind of, it becomes salient or obvious then that minimal groups can be a hell of a lot more aggressive towards their outgroup than potentially more long-term or stable groups. So when we talk about in-group love and outgroup hate, and as I've said, we don't find a lot of outgroup hate in general. It's more just outgroup ambivalence and in-group affection. Well, when it comes to minimal groups, assigned groups, these seemingly arbitrary pieces of bullshit where, again, there is no hierarchy, there is nothing to lose, and particularly, there is nothing to lose in an anonymous environment. Well, we may see something a little bit different. And in fact, it's why we probably saw some of the absolute outright warfare that we did see going on on 4chan. Again, I think 90% of it's jokes, but probably a couple of autists took shit a little bit too seriously. Anyway, what's the point of all of this? Well, the point is fairly simple. What we saw as a result of all of these psychological effects, the effects of de-individuation, that is anonymity, the effects of, as such, the social identity model of de-individuation effects and social identity in general, and most specifically, of minimal group identification, was outright social warfare all across 4chan for about a 24-hour period. And not just 4chan, by the way, it's spread across all forms of social media, because let's get real, folks. It's not a secret clubhouse. It hasn't been since 2006 or some shit. But just as an example, let's take a look at some of the massive amounts of fan art that again appeared over a 24-hour period. You gave these people 
24 hours, they developed all of these different characters, these identities, these personalities, these norms. What does it mean to be cream? What does it mean to be peanut butter? And that's fucking fascinating to me. Everything had new meaning. This is what's required of being a peep. This is what's required of being cream. That kind of shit, that fascinates me and intrigues me to no end. And I think, hopefully here, through my very short but hopefully succinct explanation, I've kind of given some reasons why this occurs. We are tribalistic as a species and always will be. Therefore, we seek identification. You've got to think for yourself! You're all individuals! Yes, we're all When we exist in an anonymous space, we don't have any real signifiers of the sense of the self. We don't have things that we can use as avatars. We don't have things that we can use that say, hey, I'm different from you. But when we are given one, and particularly when we are given an identifier that only links us in any other way to another person, as we have found in the research on minimal group identification, as Henri Tanchevel has examined, and many other researchers have over the last 40 years, is that all it takes is a color. All it takes is a name in order for you to become absolutely whatever I tell you that you are. And whatever I tell you you are, if it is something as simple as a name, as a color, as, I don't know, a fucking flip of the coin, well then it's up to you to define what it means to be whatever that thing is. It is now within your hands collaboratively as a group to define the new sense of the self, to say not only who am I, but who are we together? Who are we? And that is the fucking fascinating shit. And that is exactly what we saw on <laughs> April Fool's Day in 2018. A fantastic, self-contained, and absolutely beautiful, very short and succinct examination and kind of quasi-experiment in the creation, development, and ultimately death of de-individuated minimal groups. And uh, just kind of a neat thing I thought I'd talk about real quickly. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. I am Aiden Paladin, Altana Bolt.